Welcome to A Crossroad Christmas. We are thrilled that you are able to be here with us out on the patio around the fire to celebrate the moment that our Creator joined His creation in the most intimate way possible, making this truly the most wonderful time of year. Flicker of hope to let the world know the darkness will soon be light. See that stable in a manger, Lord. Well, it ain't just a manger, Lord. It's what heaven used to show me and you just how far his love will go. Make way, make way for the King of Kings. Let heaven and nature sing. A Savior is born to
There's an old Christmas song written by Eddie Arnold that spells out Christmas. You might remember it. C is for the Christ child, born on Christmas Day. Well, we're not going to do that one. (laughs) But we are going to do this new one with the banjo. here for our Crossroad children. And at this time, children second grade and down may be dismissed with their teachers to their classes. And for the rest of us, please stand and join us as we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
That was some great singing. Thank you so much. And now you may be seated. Traditional Christmas carols have been sung by multiple generations and are often done in ways that reflect the times. But sometimes it's good to hear those older versions with just a few unexpected moments. I love those J I N G L E bells. Those holiday J I N G L E bells. Those happy J I N G L E B E double L S. I love those J I N G L E bells. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Now, I'm sure that some of you have heard of the Radio City Rockettes, right? A couple heads nodding, yeah? Well, we've been having some fun this year referring to our ladies as the Crossroad patio Ets. As they come, please make them feel welcome. And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be For I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee but they wouldn't dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me and the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be, for I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me high and they left me there on a cross to
Did you all enjoy that? That was something. Well, we may not look or sound as nice as the patio ads, but it's good to know that we all have a place in the choir. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing high. Some sing out loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing high. Some sing out loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got. Listen to the top where the little birds sing. Hasn't got much to say, and the porcupine talks to himself. All God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing high. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got. Listen to the basses, the one on the bottom where the bullfrog croaks and the hippopotamus moans and groans with a big to do, and the old cow just goes moo. Oh, yeah! All guys screech, got a place in the choir. Well, some sing low and some sing higher. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or balls or anything they got now. We got applause, we didn't even dance. <laughs> you, you guys got anything down there? My, my back hurts. Okay. Uh, nothing here. What about you, Eddie? You got something? Don't look at me, I just whistle. <laughs> Where's a pastor barb when you need one? <laughs> well, I remember a few moves, like the speed skater. <laughs> And uh, remember that one? And the canoeer? Remember that one? <laughs> but I did learn one move in school. Okay. Oh, no, he didn't see it. Is he? Oh. All right. Hit it! Some sing low and some sing high, some sing out loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or balls or anything they got. Now, all God's creatures got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing high, some sing out loud on a telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or balls or anything they got. Now, all God's creatures got a place in the Pastor Rick is a man of many talents <laughs> and a few surprises. Well, since we all have a place in the choir, we can all join the angels in celebrating the coming of our Lord. Stop singing, the Lord is coming. 
song Sister, let me tell you why the bells are ringing The Lord has come Born this day in Bethlehem There's a king in a manger, no room in the view The wise men seek him, the shepherds do Born for me and you, come on and join the
Christmas holiday is such a wonderful time of year with so many things to look forward to, like spending time with family and friends yeah. and Christmas parties with great food to the holiday parades and the wonderful displays of the Christmas lights and even the simple things like putting up a Christmas tree at home yeah. with your loved ones. I totally agree. And I really do enjoy spending time with family this time of year. And you know, the gifts, they're nice too, but they aren't the true meaning of Christmas. That honor is reserved for our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And our Savior, the one who exchanged a palace in glory for a stable in Bethlehem, a robe of glory for a fe the feeble body of an infant, mm -hmm. fulfilling all of God's plan of being yes. born of a virgin and of the Holy Spirit, and that he would be called Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. Yes. And you know, although he came as a babe, he was also a king. And, you know, most of the time, kings are born into wealth and opulence, but our Jesus had neither. Our Savior came because he saw our brokenness and desperate need of salvation. So he became like us to be the perfect sacrifice before a holy God, laying down his life so that we could live from a manger in Bethlehem to the cross and from the cross to an empty tomb. He came for us Thank you, Jesus. as a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths. Yeah. Hmm. Swaddling cloths. You know, how appropriate is it that we wrap gifts for our friends and family in the same manner that Jesus, God's gift to the world, came wrapped in swaddling clothes? And, you know, Scripture tells us that it was these cloth wrappings that would actually serve as a key sign to the shepherds that they had found the babe that the angel had spoken of. 
And at that announcement of his birth, all of heaven responded with the angels saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, yes. goodwill towards men. And scripture also tells us that when our Lord and Savior was born, that there was no room for him in the end. But today, let us all make room for him in our hearts. The greatest gift ever known to mankind. And the Bible says, for For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Luke wrote about this love when he said now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night and behold the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were greatly afraid and the angel said to them do not be afraid for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people for there is born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory Glory to to God God in in the the highest, and and on on earth earth peace, goodwill toward men. Yeah. 
Imagine a world without Christmas. Imagine a world without Jesus. That would be awful. Jesus did come, and he changed the world. He changed how it functioned, how it acted. We're, we have experienced those changes in our world. When Jesus came... And started his ministry, he said, the kingdom has come near to you. The kingdom of God. Heaven toward us. Remember when they said, teach us how to pray. And and he said this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Jesus came to bring the thoughts and ways of the kingdom to us. Heaven on earth. He changed how we looked at one another. He said, now you're going to love one another like I loved you. He said strange things like pray for your enemies. Bless those that curse you. He changed how we looked at family. He changed our attitudes toward marriage. He suddenly said it's not just wrong to do adultery, now it's wrong to even have the thought of it in your heart. He brought the kingdom of God to us and said this is how you can be. He did ministry in such a way that women were lifted up and it blew people away, like why why are you doing it that way? But he, he knew in the beginning it was Adam and Eve, them two had become one. And he brought women back to that place. He brought value back to children. Children were just a bother. And children, if you didn't like them, you could kill them. And if you didn't want them, you could leave them on a dump. And Jesus came into that world and he says, no, no, let the children come to me. And he blessed those children. And then he said something like this. You want to come into the kingdom of God? You must come like a little child. Wow, he gave value to our children again. And to people, to regular, ordinary people. You know, we have hospitals today. You know why? Because God touched people's hearts and said, you know what? Medicine shouldn't just be for the rich or for the soldier or the military. It should be for everybody. And it was believers who opened up these many hospitals that we have You ever seen the names? Presbyterian this, First Baptist that. So many hospitals were opened up because of believers. They also opened up universities and colleges because they thought everybody, not just a few, everybody ought to be taught so they can read the Bible. Schools were established so everybody could get educated and begin to learn. All these things came out of a change that happened when Jesus came into the world. Now, what's happening in our world right now? Right now in our own country, our leaders are forgetting God. 
Our leaders have kicked God out of our institutions. They don't want to talk about God. Now they talk about all kinds of crazy things. So what's happening to those blessings that I just talked about? Marriages are crumbling. They don't stay together anymore. The value of women is decreasing. Now, if you say a man can't have a baby, you might lose your job. Do you understand how we've devalued who a woman is now? And children, oh my dear, when Roe v. Wade was kicked out because it was unconstitutional, what did our state do? We said, now you can abort your baby right at the moment of birth. No value for our children. When we move God out of our heart, the blessing of what Jesus is is diminished, and we see it being destroyed in our country today. Hospitals, which came from believers, are now struggling just to stay open. We've got an education system that got its worst grades right now in our lifetime. Right now. See, when you push out God, the blessings start to diminish. But God loved us enough that he sent the blessing to us. He sent Jesus to us. How did that first Christmas happen? What was the dynamics that made it all come to pass that we could sing about a birth in Bethlehem? Look at this scripture in Luke. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now the sixth month, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth. The sixth month of what? Elizabeth's pregnancy. This was Zachariah and Elizabeth. They they were expecting John the Baptist. She was in her sixth month of pregnancy when Gabriel went to Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him and she was troubled at his saying, And considered, what manner of greeting is this? Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, and he will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Now that's a pretty big promise. It's going to have the throne of David, the king. and There's not going to be any end of that kingdom. And and you're going to have this baby you're about ready to conceive. And then she asked a very good question. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I do not know a man. You see, what the angel said seems impossible. How can it be her? And how can all these things come true? Because my circumstances don't fit. My circumstances don't go with what you're saying. How am I going to have a child? I don't even know a man. But God has an answer. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of God. And now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. Now, Mary said, how can this be? You told me something incredible. I don't even know a man. My circumstances say it seems impossible. Yet God, when he brings you an incredible message, he wants you to know he's the God of the impossible. He can do it. What do you need to do when God brings you something like that? Here's what she did. (coughs) Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. What did she do? It didn't matter if she didn't understand how it could happen. It didn't matter if she said, my circumstances are all wrong. If God said it, she has the right to believe it. And she chose to say, then be it unto me 
according to that word. You want to know how we got a babe born in Bethlehem? Because Mary, nine months earlier, believed her God about an impossible promise. It was at that moment that a baby was conceived. And let me tell you, the day you believe the impossible promise, we set it up here, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to do what? To die for your sin, to be raised again as Lord and Savior. And if you'll believe in him, if you will trust him, if you will receive him as your Lord and Savior, he promises you that you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. So what do we need to do? We do need to believe the impossible promise. I've heard this before. People say, well, pastor, if I, if I came to your church, the ceilings would fall in. You ever heard that one? Somebody else said, well, pastor, you don't know what I've done. And I just say, well, God knows what you've done. And he sent his son anyway. God came for all of us to offer us an impossible promise. That we, we see people die all the time, yet he's offered us eternal life. For those that believe him, that we just do a transition. People see death, but we just translate it to the next place. This is what he said. It seems impossible. Maybe you think your circumstances don't add up. You might question God and say, how can that be? And he says, because I'm the God who can do anything. So now it's up to you. Is Christmas going to come to you? Is Christmas going to be born in you? You know how it came to Mary? The Holy Spirit overshadowed and then it was conceived. You want to know how you're going to be born again? The Holy Spirit's going to come and you're going to be changed. You're going to be born again. If you've never done that, that's the offer here today. We did all this so we could have this moment to preach to you that message. It's crazy to do six services on a weekend. You know what? People wouldn't do this even if we paid them. Yeah, we got people doing it, aren't being paid at all. Because they've had something happen in their heart. Come on, all of them, from the people in the parking lot to the people in the tech, the people here, the people in the kitchen. They've all had something happen in their heart. God came on them, changed them, saved them. And now they get an opportunity to be able to present something like this. So why? So you could hear the gospel. So you could hear the impossible promise. And you could believe in the God of the impossible. Now, if you're here and you've never received Jesus as Lord, yet God has brought you to that very moment. He's pulled on your heart. Then this is your day. This is your moment. I can lead you in a prayer of you committing your heart, your life, to the Lord. I guarantee you, your brothers and sisters that already understand, they will be happy with you. They'll support the prayer you're about ready to do. But you need to confess Christ. You need to be willing to raise that hand and say, Pastor Rick, it's me. It's time for me to give my heart to the Lord. Anybody in the room need that prayer today? I see that hand, brother. I see that hand, brother. Anybody else? Come on, anybody else need that prayer? Anybody else? All right. Praise God. All right. We're, we're going to say it with you, brother. We're going to say this prayer. And anybody else, if you, were, if you were afraid to raise your hand, we'll mean this prayer. Is there somebody else? Somebody else? Okay. Well, if you were afraid to raise your hand, be willing to mean this in your heart. God will hear your heart. God will hear you. Let's say this prayer with our brother. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. The songs and the words I've heard, you've used them to draw me to yourself. So right now, in front of all these witnesses, I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Come live in me. Thank you for dying for my sin and removing them out of the way. I turn from those sins and choose to live for you. Holy Spirit, come and fill me now. Teach me the ways of Jesus that I might follow after him all the days of my life. And it's according to your word that as I do this, I can confess by faith that I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate with our brother.
And I, and brother, right, right over here, as soon as this service is over, go right over here. We got, uh, uh, is it Pastor Vince? Pastor Vince over there and his wife, Katrina. They want, he wants to pray with you and invest in that decision. And anybody else, if you said that prayer and you meant it, please, you go over too. Tell them that you gave your heart to the Lord and they will pray with you. And, and we're just so grateful. And if you don't have a, a place or a home church, you can have one here. But we all say, welcome to the family, brother. Welcome to anybody who gave their heart to the Lord here today. And then I just want to say one last thing. The, uh, you know, Jesus said nobody's seen God at any time. Nobody has. God is of higher dimension than us. We can't see who he is, so God came to us. He sent himself in the form of that child, that baby, to become Jesus, to become the one who would die on the cross. God coming down to us. The word says Emmanuel, God with us. For what reason? So we could finally see God. So we could finally have somebody who would pay for our sins. We could finally have somebody who could allow the kingdom to get into us. He was the light of the world. Now we're called to be lights of the world. Are we willing to do it? I hope you were encouraged today. <clears throat> I hope this was a blessing to you. And I hope you're ready to go out of this place and be that light that he's called us to be. It was Jesus who declared, now you are the light of the world. You go, you tell, you teach. You baptize. God's commissioned us. If he laid down his life for us, aren't we willing to start laying down our lives for him? Amen, church. Come on. Lord, thank you for this moment that we've been able to come here. Thank you for the encouragement that we've been able to give one another to build up and courage and edify. And Lord, we just ask that this time that we have left in these few songs we're going to do. May we stop simply being a spectator and may we join in to this worship. May we praise you with all of our heart. May we be a grateful people for what you did on that Christmas day. May we be grateful like those angels that broke through and they began to sing glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. Goodwill to men. Thank you for loving us with such a great love. Now may we all worship you together. May we not just sit in the seat, but may we worship you right now with all of our heart as we close this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Reveal the key.
stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angel stood
Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for filling the house. Thank you for filling our hearts. Thank you for being our Lord and our Savior. Thank you for showing us such a great love. May we, Lord, be ready to walk out of this place encouraged, strengthened by you. May we follow after your direction and live the life you've called us to. May people see Jesus in us. May people see the Christ child and the Lord of all in our life. Thank you, Lord, we've had this opportunity. And now reign and rule. Take your rightful place. And may we hear and listen. May we be like Mary when she said, The maid servant of the Lord, be it unto me. Lord, here are your servants. We surrender to you now. Do your will. Do your will through each one of us. And we'll give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name and everybody said, amen. Somebody give the Lord praise in the house. Come on. Come on, he's worthy of our praise today. He's worthy of our praise today. Amen, he is worthy of our praise today. He is worthy of our praise, amen. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Indulge me just a little bit. This is our last service. This is our sixth service, and I just uh, want to say to all of them, you know, I'm proud to be here with you. I'm blessed to be here with you, to see their commitment and what God's done with it. With all the tech people, did you see the lights and all the beauty they did? It was beautiful what they did. All the people who've been serving Saturday and today out in that parking lot, all the people who served with our kitchen teams, everybody who kept those bathrooms clean, the ushers who got people in and got people out and protected us through all this. We're grateful for every single one of them. I, I couldn't be happier, more pleased with what God has done. And how about the Daisy family here and this little child that did all six services, <laughs> all six services, and represented Jesus so well. Only cried one time, and that was beautiful, too. That was beautiful, too. It's been awesome. We thank you for coming and being part of this service, the one that wraps it all up. But still, we've got one more thing. <laughs> one more thing we want to say to you.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ooh, hug a neck and you're dismissed.